Welcome to the session on function foundations for Algebra 2. We're going to look at representing a set of ordered pairs in a mapping diagram, a table, and a graph. Find the domain and range for a set of ordered pairs, and find the domain and range of a relation graphed in the coordinate plane. So just some vocab, which you'll see again if you watch the next video. Relation, any set of ordered pairs x and y. Domain, the x values of a relation, and the range are the y values of that relation. Four ways to represent relations. Arrow diagrams, which you can see here. These are arrow diagrams or mapping diagrams. The, this is a table, a graph, and ordered pairs. So what I did is I took these three ordered pairs or this set and I showed it in a mapping diagram, a table, and then a graph. Now the graph does go off nine. My graph doesn't go up to nine so I had to put it up here. But you can see the different ways that we can represent a relation. And in mapping diagrams you can have um, more than one arrow going to a number. It depends on your set of ordered pairs. Domain and range. Identify the domain and the range of each relation. Well, if you go back to the vocab, we said that domain are the x values of your ordered pairs. So if we look through here, our x values are the negative 1, the 0, the 3, and the 5. So the domain then consists of the numbers negative 1, 0, 3, and 5. The range would be the y values. So let's use, we have a color we can use here, let's use green. So we have 2, 5, 8, and 9. That's for our range. So it'll be 2, 5, 8, and 9. Your y values are your range values. Moving on, we're going to look at some graphs where we identify the domain and range. So this is a graph that has a point here at 3, three 4. And the arrow means that it's going to infinity. So in order to identify the domain, we need to look at what values on the x-axis does this graph cover? And when we write that domain, we're going to use what's called set builder notation. And we talked about set builder notation back in unit one. But we're looking to see what values of x does our graph cover. So if we look from this point here down to the x-axis, it's starting at three on the x-axis. And then, if you notice, this graph is going on to infinity. So it's going and it's expanding as it goes. So it is covering the whole x-axis from the 3 to the right. So when we write the domain, we use, when we're using set builder notation, we are using usually um, less than, greater than, you may use the less than or equal to sign, the greater than or equal to sign, you may use equals, you may use not equals. Um, depending on the graph. So how do I know when I'm using equals, or I'm sorry, greater than and less than, and how do I know when I'm using less than or equal to and greater than or equal to? Well, it depends on the graph. If there's a closed circle here, like there is for this one, you're using the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, because that means that you're including this point. So again, our graph covers the x-axis starting here and moving to the right. So our domain then will be x such that x is greater than or equal to 3. Now don't get too caught up on the notation. We talked about this before. This bar means such that. So you put the variable, you put the bar. x such that x is greater than or equal to 3. That's our domain. Then our range.
we'll use y values. So it'll be y such that, and you'll write something to show the range for this problem. So if we're talking about the range, we're looking at what values on the y-axis does our graph cover. Well, if we go over to, it does have a point here where the graph actually starts. So that corresponds to 4 on the y-axis. And the graph is continuing down to infinity. So it starts at 4 and it actually goes, covers the y-axis going down. We have no part of our graph up here, nor will we have any part of the graph up here because it's going down. So it starts at 4 and it proceeds down. So our range is y less than or equal to 4 because we want the values 4 and below 4. So we use less than or equal to. And last but not least, we're going to take a look at this one. This one looks a little odd. It starts at a point and then it moves down. And then it goes back up again and continues on to infinity. So let's talk about our domain, which will be an x. What values are being covered on the x-axis by this graph? Is it the whole x-axis? Is it only part of it? Well, look at where we have a point here starting. It's at negative 6. So if we look down, negative 6 on the x-axis is where this graph is starting, and then it proceeds to the right, covering every x value. Now, here's where we have to be careful because this is an open circle. So an open circle is when you will use the greater than or less than sign. And for our domain, we're starting at negative six, starting at negative six and moving right. So we want values that are greater than negative six. So our domain is x such that x is greater than negative six. So we use the greater than sign rather than the greater than or equal to because of the open circle right here. It means don't include this point in your domain. Then for, for our range, you have to watch here because the graph starts here, but then it goes down. So if we go across to where that is, where it's connecting to the y-axis, it's at 2. So our graph is actually covering points on the y-axis starting at 2 and increasing in the up direction. So this is, even though there's no actual dot there, if you don't see an open circle, you assume that it's a closed, closed circle. It's going through the point. So when we write our range here, it will be y such that y is greater than or equal to 2. And that ends our session on function foundations.